This is my mother-in-law. She's about to open a birthday present made by 20 of her closest family and friends, and it contains 20 unique dog paintings. But before we get to all of that, let's talk about my mother-in-law. <laughs> her name is Susie, but I've called her Miss pretty much as long as we've known each other. And a few months ago, her birthday was coming up and that presented a problem. Getting a perfect gift for someone can be stressful. Sure, you could buy something, but then I remembered that I like to make for others, so I could make for her. But what? Well, I started listing what she loves, like her family and her dogs and hanging stuff on walls and other people's dogs and hanging dog themed stuff on walls and dogs. And then it hit me. <laughs> what if I could make something for her that was about dogs, big surprise, that she could hang on a wall and somehow be made by everyone she loves. When I'm thinking through ideas, it helps me to draw and write out all the random thoughts that come to mind. Eventually, some of those things come together into a first idea. And over time, that idea usually changes and grows. And that's exactly what happened with this project. The basic idea was to get 20 of her closest family and friends to each do a dog painting. And those paintings would somehow be attached to a frame that somehow hangs on a wall, with each painting somehow detachable so that she could see the backs where there would be a picture of the person that did the painting along with any birthday wishes or encouraging words they had for her. After some more drawing, I went with a square shape that was big enough to paint on, but not so big that the frame holding all of them would be a ridiculous size. My father-in-law has a nice wood shop, so I used his drill press to put holes in the back of the squares to eventually place magnets so they could somehow attach to a magnet or metal that was part of the frame. I didn't have that part figured out yet. The concern with working there is when I've used my father-in-law's wood shop before, my mother-in-law usually stops in to say hi. How you doing, miss? Well, I'm okay. I'm She's social like that. So I had to have a plan just in case she asked what I was doing. So what are you doing? Um, I'm just making some squares. Yes, you are. You got a lot of squares over there. How are, uh, how are your dogs? Knock on wood today, everybody's good. Yeah, all three. Um, while preparing the squares with a couple base coats of white, I started thinking through the process of how to make it easy for every person to do a dog painting. Not everyone is comfortable drawing or holding a brush or picking paint colors or handcrafting something for a loved one that will be displayed in their house for years to come. These are some things that are stressful to some people. And I realized that this project wasn't just gonna be about making something cool for Miss. It was also going to be about making a process that was easy for a large group of people with a wide range of artistic levels, ages, and available time. And at the end of it all, everyone should feel like they made something for Miss with just a little bit of help from me. So after more sketching and thinking, here's where we landed. Miss has a husband, sisters, best friend, and three children that each have their own family. Each of those groups was given a background color that was different, but complementary to the other background colors, so they'd all look nice together. After dividing up and painting the squares of those background colors, all the dog sketches got scanned in, resized, printed, cut out, and then lightly traced them to the squares. To give everyone plenty of choice, there was almost twice as many squares as we would need, with some of them blank. So if someone wanted to do their own dog painting completely from scratch, they could. Just like the background colors, all of the group color palettes complemented each other. So there was an overall consistency to the project. Everyone got plenty of options, but not so many that they would be overwhelmed with choices. And before they started painting, they were given a drawing of the dog they chose and markers that were the same colors as the paints they were going to pick from, so they could do a test run to see if they liked the colors before committing to paint with them. This also helped me because then I only gave them the paints they wanted, and we didn't end up with a lot of wasted paint.
Everyone did a really good job. And even the people that were a little hesitant to try ended up getting into it. Being part of making something for a loved one was stronger than any fear they had of messing up or doing something new to them. After all of that, I took everyone's picture while they held their work of art and asked if there was anything they wanted to say to Miss. Their picture and words would eventually be put on the back of their square and also cover up the magnet. There were some days that no one could come over to paint, so the work of making the frame could begin. I started by cutting the standard parts of a regular picture frame, but then added a permanent back that the paintings would sit in. Since I hadn't done this before, I started with a small test frame, and after seeing it put together, that got me wondering, what if, in addition to the big wall frame, there were some small standing frames? Then, Miss could move the pictures around however she wanted and could have endless amounts of placement and arrangement choices. However, that would mean that there'd be more spaces than paintings, so when empty, the spaces need to look cool. That problem ended up answering how to attach the paintings to the frames. A metal square could be put inside each face and painted a color that was like the background color of the four different people groups. After looking at all the different kind of metal options, I found out that the thinnest and lightest metal available that the magnets would attach to was ductwork. I also found out that I didn't have the correct tools to cut the thin ductwork, but our AC repair guy had the best tools and was kind enough to help out. After scuffing with Scotch-Brite, cleaning with mineral spirits, and then priming, they got painted just like the square blocks. With the small frames made and all the metal ready to go, the big frame got built. Even though this was bigger and more complex, it went faster than expected because of the experience making the smaller frames. I was definitely glad the size of the blocks weren't any larger because that would have made this frame exponentially bigger. After everyone's paintings were dry, a couple passes of clear coat got put on, magnets were glued in, and then people's pictures and their words were attached to the back and covered with shipping tape for protection. After covering the frame with multiple coats of white primer and finishing with spray paint, the masks were removed and the metal squares were glued in, exactly like the reference sheet on the table, so that all the colors were spread out evenly. Everything got sprayed with a few passes of clear coat. A French cleat was installed on the back of the big frame, since it's a lot heavier than a typical picture frame that hangs by a wire. Bumpers got put on to make space for airflow between the wall and the frame to prevent moisture buildup. After completely finishing one of the smaller frames, the rest were all built to sit at the same angle, so none of them would tip over from the weight of the blocks. Also, this was my first experience with ribbon, and I had no idea there were so many different ribbon options. So many. I wouldn't say it was scary, but it was definitely surprising. Got some much appreciated help with the wrapping, and then the same pictures that were put on the back of the paintings were turned into gift tags. For her birthday, the one thing Miss had asked for was to go on a dog walk with all of her kids, which made for a perfect time to get the gifts into her house for the surprise. This project went really well. It was fun to work on. Not just because Miss enjoyed it, but because it grew me in thinking through how I could help others grow in skills that I had been developing for a while. The idea of drawing or painting isn't that scary to me, but I've done it for a while. But for others, 
those skills aren't something they've developed much or used recently. So sometimes the idea of making for others could be growing them in a skill that you know. If that sounds interesting, but you don't know how to do that, just use the technique I was taught and used to teach my son how to paint the four small frames. With the first frame, he watched me do it and I told him what I was doing while I did it. With the second frame, he did it and I was with him and stepped in whenever he needed help. With the third frame, I was there but didn't step in and kept my talking to a minimum. An easy way for me to do this is by having a cup of coffee with me and any time I was gonna talk, I drank coffee instead. And if I still needed to say something after coffee, I did. Finally, with the fourth frame, I was nearby if he needed help, but he pretty much did all of it on his own. Now, he might still need help in the future, but the overall goal was to gently introduce him to his skill and then gradually pull back while he grew in his skills and confidence. Now, it won't always go this easy, and some things are more complicated to teach, so you need to spend more time at each step, but it's definitely worth the effort to pass along the skills you've grown in and help people make for others. This is a happy birthday to my baby sister. I hope you have many, many more. You will have a clever son in law. <laughs> you got me, kid. You're going to try. I thought that was going to be it, Dave. Well, you're close. But no cigar. No cigar.